Hi, this is Alicia Lawrence from Webpage FX. I'm here on behalf of the SEO webinar series that Schweike Media is hosting. Today we're going to talk about local search ranking factors. Uh, you might see all those different terms and numbers being, oh my goodness, what does this all mean? And we're going to break that down for you today. Uh, but more importantly, I just want to emphasize why optimizing your local SEO is so, so important for you. Even if you're uh, just a local magazine or a cafe, um, it's crucial that you make local SEO um, a main part of your marketing budget. Uh, because that's how people are going to find you, especially when they don't know you exist. So first, let's take a look at these ranking factors. Uh, you see the major ones are place page signals, external local signals, and on-page signals. And then we have a whole bunch of variety of smaller ones from social to personalization. Um, and why these are all so important is because local is becoming such a crucial part of Google search. Uh, you have the carousel now with the interactive Google Maps. Uh, you have Google Plus, which is just becoming even more and more integrated every month. Uh, even their recent integration with hashtags, where you can hashtag a word, let's say hashtag Schweiki Media in the Google search, and then anything that relates to that in Google Plus will automatically brought it up in the right-hand side of the search panel for you to view. So that's a, a great integration there that you can do, and a lot with local as well. And then obviously Google Places, which is just huge uh, for organic ranking. And all of these, uh, just to give you some information and background on these ranking factors, uh, this was from Moz.com. They do a search ranking factor survey every year. So this is from their 2013 survey. So let's get started. Uh, the first one, and the biggest portion of your local SEO is going to be your place page signals. This includes uh, property category associations uh, and proximity. Uh, which includes the accurate NAP, and NAP stands for name, address, and phone number, which should be matching all across your site, uh, making sure that um, it's on all your place page information, it's consistent throughout any place that you have it on the web. Um, and the category association, that can be on Google Places, Google Plus, and multiple citations that you'll hopefully be building that we'll talk on later. And also a uh, location keyword in the title tags and headlines, which is pretty crucial. Next, we have on-page signals. Once again, your NAP, name, address, and phone number information should be featured on your website. It should be the same across your schema, your HTML, matching your page NAP, and your H card, making sure all that is the exact same information so it doesn't confuse Google Spider when it goes and uh, scans your website. It can make sure it can accurately represent your information together. And so that will bring it up whenever someone that has an IP address that's in that proximity uh, Googles something that could relate to your business. Also, you have the keywords and location in title and meta description. And you want the domain authority, which comes with on-page SEO, which we'll be linking to in the article with this, uh, to a previous article I did about on-page SEO, making sure that's strong. Because the more on-page SEO you do, the higher domain authority, which means the better ranking you will get for your local SEO. And of course, if you have an optimized landing page, uh, optimize that for local. And landing pages are very important. So if you don't already have a landing page uh, for your website, I would highly encourage you to get that and optimize it for your local needs. Next, we have external local signals. And that consists of 16% of the ranking factors. And these are consistent, high-quality citations from sources that are authoritative, trustworthy, and industry-relevant. Uh, not all of them will be industry-relevant, but you want to make sure that the ones that are, you want to be on those, because uh, that makes a good portion of how you rank for local SEO and in the search engine. And of course, the citations, uh, those are making sure you have your name, address, and phone number on uh, the different directories that are online, like the internet, Yellow Pages, Yelp.com, Superpages.com, Yahoo Local, City Search, Manta, Yellow Book, even Facebook Local, and dozens more. Um, this is a great thing that you can get an intern to do just to go through one summer or a few weeks and make sure that you are on these uh, citations and that all your information is accurate and up to date, which is crucial in how you will rank. Next, you have the link signals, uh, which are high-quality inbound links. 
And we're actually going to talk more about uh, inbound links on our next webinar because uh, that has a lot to do with SEO in general. And uh, you know what makes a good high quality inbound link for now, I'll leave you with uh, the domain authority. That's very crucial to make sure that whatever website is linking back to you, that they have a fairly good domain authority and they have a, a good trust. So that's why newspapers are always a great a way to get trust from another website because it's a very trusted source. And also make sure you have great anchor text, especially if you're local. It's great if you can get uh, any anchor text from, let's say, an, an example I'm using later in the webinar. For Mr. Reuter, you want to say, Onita, you know, Mr. Reuter. Get that entire phrase, anchor text, and then draw it back to your site with a link. And that will really help you. And once again, we'll be going over that in the next webinar. Next, we have a very important one, it's reviews. Uh, people might think, well, you know, I have some reviews, they're mixed, but how many people do you think really read this? A lot of people. <laughs> um, reviews are very, very important, especially views on uh, those at Google Places and relevant third-party sites. You want to make sure also that that's uh, with the text reviews, that they have a good portion of a, a text with them, and that their diversity, um, it has lots of different information, not just about one product or service, but that they do link to or even have the keywords in there for your products and services. Um, also, the quantity of reviews is very important, uh, and the location, making sure all the locations with them are accurate with where they have taken place if you have multiple locations. And obviously, making sure that they are positive, but at the same time, realistic. You don't want to to look that you're putting your own reviews out there and that they're all ones that you just wrote up yourself from the company. You want people to believe you, and they should be real. Uh, ask your customers, the ones that are loyal fans, to write a review, and they definitely will. Uh, customers don't want you to fail as a company, and they'll help you out with that in the review section. So once again, getting that on third-party sites uh, and also on the Google Places uh, reviews and making sure they are uh, native reviews. And talking about reviews, why is reviews so important besides people looking at them? Well, because of the carousel that Google recently put up just uh, these past few months. If you've noticed, if you go into Google, you don't even have to type the city you're in. You just type in cafes. And what comes up but the carousel at the top, which is a um, horizontal uh, carousel that goes around that you can see all these different companies that are on uh, the Google Places. And actually, they draw their information from Google Plus as well. That's why you see these reviews and scores. So people can now just scan through this, pick a company, and be like, hmm, what's this uh, rela related to my uh, location here? They look down to their right where that map is, and then they can see how close they are to location as well as reviews, numbers, hours. So you want to make sure that your uh, Google Plus has all that information filled out for them, so it is on the carousel. And also those reviews, because uh, more than uh, more than probably 90% of people will go there uh, when they're looking at cafes and different uh, hotels and things that do come up on the carousel, and they will see that review score right off the bat. So that's important for uh, you to make sure you make that good impression on them. Next, we have personalization, which kind of going back to the carousel, uh, which does have some personalization that I'll show you in a second. Uh, but the personalization only makes up for 8%, but it is a growing factor. Uh, personalization search uh, is like when one of your friends on Google Plus, plus one's a company, let's say the plus one Schweiki Media, which you all should do. Then if you did a search in Google, uh, that company would come up earlier in the SERP, which is the search engine results pages, because your friend liked it. Uh, you don't even have to like Schweiki Media in order for you to see it in the search engine results page because your friend did. Uh, and this goes back to the example I showed. Uh, this was connected to my Google Plus, and you might be surprised to see that Tomato Pie Cafe Facebook is that first result that you might think, why Tomato Pie Cafe and here's it? Well, that's called personalization. Uh, it's because I had actually liked Tomato Pie Cafe years ago, and now it's right there first on my search results, Google reminding me that I liked it. Uh, so that shows a little bit of what personalization is. 
And it has more to that because it's, it's definitely a growing field. And each day, SEOs are discovering more and more ways that Google is personalizing the search to uh, match individual needs and make it a more social, social search experience. An example of that would be Now Cards, which was literally just released. Um, it's one of their most recent updates. And it's triggered based on location. And the information is pulled from companies, uh, the company's Google Plus local account. And uh, now these Now Cards show events based on your search and what you previously liked on Google Plus. Another factor in Now Cards is uh, users uploading events to their Gmail calendar. So that now affects what they will see in the search and results page. Uh, for example, if you're an email or if you're running an email marketing campaign, you want to make sure that if you have an event coming up, a webinar, anything like that, that you have an option to include them to the reader's Gmail's calendar. Because if that's uploaded into the Gmail's calendar, it will create a now card so that all of their friends that's connected with that Gmail, with that Google Plus, will see that event. They'll be like, oh, this person's going to attend the Schweiky Media event, so I'm going to go too because, you know, I'm interested in the same thing because we're friends. So you see how that could be a, a huge benefit for marketers as well as for local SEO if you're having like a local event, um, even for charities that are local, that could be a, a great way to uh, use that personalized search. Next, we have social signals, which is only 6% right now, but it's, it's truly growing. Uh, that one probably most of all I can tell uh, just from my experience in SEO. Um, you have the rel author, which is important for mostly for bloggers or for people who have blogs that are connected with your company website. Uh, but you can connect that rel author, which is your Google Plus, uh, to your website. So it shows a, a face that is um, connected with the Google Plus profile right in the search results by that a website that it's connected to. And Google tends to favor uh, whoever has connected that rel author. Um, also, a completed Google Plus profile is a must. Um, there's a lot of reasons why you should do a Google Plus profile, uh, but for now, we'll just say it should be completed and active. Uh, for you to get the most benefit out of your local SEO, uh, because that does translate over to the local uh, search results. Also, geotagged media associated with your business. Uh, this could look like uh, Panoramio, a Flickr, YouTube, all those types of media should be tagged to your business because in the search results they will come up and therefore uh, people can go from that media to your business, which is a great conduit for you. Um, also, the authority of plus ones on a website, the number of shares on Google Plus that you get, Twitter followers, Facebook likes, um, other social media influencing factors there, and also uh, make sure that your Google Plus is individually owner verified. Uh, and that's important to verify your local Plus page and making sure all that information on there continues to be updated and accurate with the same name, address, and phone number that's on your HTML, that's on your H card, that's uh, should be on your website somewhere, obviously, for the spiders to know so they can organize in the search results as well. And lastly, we have behavioral signals. And this is a click-through rate from the search results to your website. This is uh, mobile clicks to call. Let's see someone's on the run. Uh, and mobile is definitely a rising field, so you should be paying attention to it, especially since a lot of people who are using mobile are local. They're trying to find phone numbers and trying to find locations on their phone uh, and trying to find places to eat. So it's a it's a great way to use mobile to make sure that um, you're getting the most out of your local search. So whenever someone, you know, types up, a certain cafe in the area, their phone number will automatically come up on the search and results page for the mobile. So people will click right there to call you. So that counts towards behavioral signals that will influence your local SEO rankings more and more. And then obviously check-ins and offers that people click um, while they're going through the websites. And so the more activity Google Census is going through your site, the more they will raise that ranking factor. So to give you a little 
well, what about this question? Uh, a lot of people come up to me and ask, well, what about companies with multiple locations? I mean, you know, I, it's one company. It's just Mr. Reuter, like our example is here. But, you know, I have one in Greater Syracuse. I have one in Oneida. There's different uh, ones all over the place. So how do I make sure Google doesn't confuse you know, my map, my name, address, and phone number with another name, address, and phone number and be like, oh, this is inconsistent, so I'm not going to rank them high. So how do you prevent that? Well, what we do at WebPageFX is we actually split it for the uh, most effective way to do SEO for them. So we actually just give you two examples of two of their websites that we split into. Uh, we have one for Onita and one for Greater Syracuse. And so now that's completely split. They have two different Google Pluses. Um, and we do their SEO differently, too. We make them have two separate campaigns so that they can get the most for each location. And so for Onita, that Mr. Reuter will come up first, and so they have the accurate contact information and everything, and then the same for Greater Syracuse. So that's a lot of information I know. <laughs> And uh, you might be thinking, I'm so confused between Google Places and Google Plus. And what's the difference between all this? Uh, well, before I get into an action plan to help you get your local SEO off the ground, I kind of want to explain um, what the difference is. They are beginning to integrate Google Places and Google Plus. Uh, but Google Places listing appears on Google Maps and Search. However, Google Plus is the one that provides the information for Google Google's carousel. Uh, and you can manage Google Plus and your AdWords account if you use that within your Google Places dashboard. So I would suggest first off, the first thing you should do is complete and verify your Google Places for Business. That's the absolute first thing you've got to take that step on. Um, they will make you verify usually through phone or email just to make sure that they have the right business. Um, and that people, if they do call you, are going to be able to get a hold of someone at that business. Next, uh, you'll want to complete your Google Plus business profile and be active. I cannot stress enough the importance of being active on your Google Plus. So it really is going to be a um, decision breaker amongst competitors uh, and even just finding your business how active you are on that Google Plus, and giving quality content. Quality content is another thing that's just huge in SEO right now, whether you're local or even for a broader spectrum, and having good quality content. And, you know, making it for this uh, local SEO, making it local and um, applicable to the local users uh, will be very beneficial, especially if you post it on those social media like Google Plus. Also, you want to optimize your on-page SEO for local. Once again, you can check out my article that I recently wrote on on-page SEO, uh, The Spiders Are Coming, to make sure that you have your page uh, and website up and running and everything you need for that. And also, claim your citations after that. Um, this is free advertising. I mean, there are directories that are just waiting for you to put your name and address and phone number on there for people to find you. Uh, and it would be a shame for you not to claim that advertising. So use the, remember to use the same name, address, and phone number on all the citations. And if you do change that name, address, or phone number, make sure you go back through all the citations. Yes, it would be a pain, but make sure you go through and change that because it means a lot in the local search engine results. And you can, once again, just get an intern to do it or an employee to do it an hour a week to go through and just get all those uh, citations. The most of them are free. Uh, some of them you might have to pay for, but the majority of them are going to be free for you. And uh, lastly, get quality reviews. Uh, quality reviews have to include uh, quality content. Uh, they, once again, they have to have diversity, making sure they not just talk about one exact service, but maybe they talk about customer service, a product, uh, why they like you, making sure, making sure you have that variety, and even the fact that they, they need to be real. You know, if there is something that they didn't like, like waiting in line, making sure that, you know, they have placed that. That's okay if you have that negative review. But try to gain for all the positive reviews that are realistic. 
and making sure that each one um, is fully optimized. You can ask someone, a friend of the company, uh, to write that up for you and even uh, post it on your Google Plus. Uh, profile page, and that would really help a lot in making sure you get conversions. So thanks for listening to this webinar today. Uh, if you have any questions or if you would like to ask a question or have me cover something in this webinar, you can email me at alicia at webpagefx.com. Thanks for listening.